What's up guys? You know why I have this big smile on my face right now? It's because this brand that I don't know, I have no idea who they are. They send me this 300 watt light here. And of course, you have this insane amount of power. It's actually brighter than a few GVM 300 watts that I have here. The camera even lost focus right now. That's how stupid bright that thing is. There you go, focus is back. But if you want a tiny little kiss of light out of a 300 watt light, bare bulb, a foot away from my face, look at this. I'm actually uh, underexposed almost, you know, overexposed and this here. So I'm gonna do this again, look at this. Uh, okay, here, there you go, 2%, 1%. So this light does a bunch of things that I want and probably a bunch of things that you're gonna want. So stay tuned, don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. You gotta see this. And a quick disclaimer, the, I guess, cool cam sent this for me to test it out. I don't get paid to say anything. This video is not sponsored by them. And all my words and opinions are my own. And this review is unbiased towards a uh, cool cam. So here's a little unboxing of the product. Unfortunately, no carrying case. However, they have a nice foam instead of that styrofoam kind of material, which is great. You can possibly even find a case that fits exactly like this here, like a thermal case, like a launch bag type of thing. Just measure here. I'm actually pretty good in finding cases like this. So everything comes with the plastic. I just removed the plastic to expedite things and to make less noise on my audio. But here's the light, reflector, power cord. And I was actually very surprised to actually have this feature right here. So you slide it to unlock it. And finally the power supply, which is very nice looking and very skinny and elegant, if that matters. Okay, so let's start with the actual physics of the light here. So this entire thing is made of metal from top to bottom, front to back, including this entire support mount right here, including the knob, including everything, which by the way has a ratchet adjustable knob here, of course. And any soft box they put in here, I don't care if you put a Fresnel this big, you take no effort in locking this down. That Fresnel, that big soft box is not gonna droop, it's not gonna go anywhere. So I'm very happy with this light right here. And also the size of the light. This is a 300 watt light and this is an iPhone uh, Pro Max here. Look at this. This light has a fan, of course, it's a 300 watt light. Right now the fan is not even spinning here. So I don't know how long it would take to spin. Probably if you crank it up to probably 30% or larger uh, amounts of intensity here. But you can also have the fan set to high, which is always a good idea to keep the light cool when you're not shooting anything audio critical type of footage. If you're shooting like, you know, B-roll or stuff like that, or a noisy kitchen or a restaurant, yes. By all means, I would recommend for any 300 watt light, 600 or whatever, to crank up the fan as much as possible. And by the way, to what I can tell, you're not going to have a problem with this fan, which I'm gonna be taking this light later on at my office, which is absolute silence right there. So don't worry about it, I'm gonna show you guys here the fan noise, which again, you're not going to have a problem with this light. So to recap everything here, this whole thing is made of metal. It's quite pretty, I would say. You have this little bit of light right here, up to 100%. What else do I got here? Everything is made of metal and by color as well. And the tungsten light, which is a problem with most LED lights because they never reproduce colors okay. I'm not saying this is an aperture level type of light, but it is pretty close, almost like scary comparing uh, a light like that to this here, especially the price. This retails for $399 currently being sold at the uh, maker of this video right here. And again, this is a 300 watt light. And this is how long it takes for the light to boot, like two seconds. Boom, on, right? This has no ballast and this power supply is manageable, is fairly lightweight. It's got some components inside, but look how skinny that is. And the power cable does not feature a professional power con twister lock cable, but even though this is a PC type of uh, three-pronged little standard power cable, they actually have this feature here to lock it. So this is not going anywhere. So you actually slide this button towards you and then it comes off. When I actually plug this back in here, this is actually locked. This is not going anywhere. Amazing. So the only cons that I have about this light is not the light itself, it's the fact that I don't know why some manufacturers, they don't supply a carrying case, the original or whatever case they designed for this. So even though the light is small, I like to have a case here, but I'm actually very good in finding cases on Amazon. So if I find one that fits, I will leave the link in the description as well. So 
The light itself, I have no complaints. I don't have a color spectrometer here, but I've been doing this for so long, about 32 years doing lighting. Just by eyeballing, I can already tell if the light is too warm, too cool for 5600 degrees Kelvin. I can already tell if the light is green oriented or magenta oriented. So I'm gonna be also making a test here with an actual subject in front of the camera so you guys can have the whole idea how this light actually performs lighting an actual person. Right now I'm shooting with the Godox SZ200BI, which Godox makes pretty accurate lights, and I'm actually shining this on my face right now. And I'm just looking at my monitor here. I didn't check on post-production or anything like that, but it looks like the way it is, 5600 degrees Kelvin here, 5600 degrees Kelvin right there, is matching pretty good. Now the most important thing of lighting here is the key light. What happens in the background there, if you can actually color match everything, is perfect. Sometimes people like to do daylight here and everything daylight there, or to add dimension to your video or cinematography footage, you can actually shoot uh, daylight right here and the whole entire background made a tungsten color or RGB everywhere. Now the green magenta correction if you actually deal with that problem is only available for RGB capable lights because you need a little bit of the RGBs to actually match uh, color. And of course this light is app capable so the app name that you want to look for is Light Real, no space, Light Real, R-E-E-L. So let's open the app with 1% increments all the way very quickly to 100%. And you can also power the light off and power it back on again. You also have shortcuts 0%, 25, 50, 75, and 100 right here at your fingertips. And in the middle, you have the linear, exponential, logarithm, and S curve, whatever you desire. I usually like linear. And as you guys know, the light is at 1%. No light in the world, the color will be anywhere near accurate. Usually, you have to crank it up to at least 10%, most lights, including this one here. Even though I don't have the Seconic C800 color spectrometer, I already know these things because my friends do. So right now the light is at 2%, slightly overexposed my face here, but the color temperature shortcuts on the bottom, 3200 degrees Kelvin, so it looks like this here, 5600 and 6500 degrees Kelvin. And of course it has effects, which you control the intensity and the speed of the effect from nine to one or zero. And then you can also change the color temperature. So I usually like this type of effects, rather cold, lightning or paparazzi, right? Because there's no flash that looks like this here. And then we have the fire. And uh, before I go there, I'm gonna go back to the pulsing effect here. Every single effect, it has its own brightness level. So let's say that you want the pulse to be at 3% and the fire to be at 28% you can do that. So again, I'm going back to the pulsing, it's set to 3%, and then the fire again, 28%. I like that a lot. So on the effects, we have pulsing, fire, TV, lightning, bed bulb, and paparazzi, SOS, fireworks, explosion, and breathing. So you have to crank everything up here. Everything is set to zero, so there's no light, but you get the idea. And then when you go to the uh, fixture list all the way on the bottom left, that's when you can actually find which light you're operating. For example, if you wanna find the light, you click on this light bulb here. So it's gonna flash showing that this light is the one that you're looking for in case you have more than one, right? And then it's running on uh, AC power on the left, as you can see here. Now the three dots in vertical, when you actually click on it, you can actually rename the light, stick it, stick it on top. I guess you prioritize this light, I guess, make it on, on top. And then firmware upgrade is very easy. It was actually fun to do a firmware upgrade here, which I'm gonna be covering this video as well in case you don't wanna mess anything up, which I believe you can't actually. And then you have the DMX settings. You have the addresses here, all the stuff. I don't use DMX, so I'm gonna skip that. And also the fan mode right here on the app. You don't need to access any menus there, which by the way, the uh, buttons, they're very finicky on the, on the back of the light. It's a little bit confusing. So I would recommend that you actually keep using the app with the slide here. And then you have the fan as auto, low speed, medium speed, and high speed. Again, it is a healthy thing for the LEDs to be cranked up to the maximum every time you can cool the light as, as much as possible. And lastly, you can actually delete the light, which I knock it. Oh, I actually delete the thing, which by the way, let's connect the light. Good idea. So click on this thing here, hit the, the uh, uh, refresh button, and then connect, there you go. And it should connect very quickly. Connecting one, pairing. Should be about, yeah, there you go. That's like what, 10, 12 seconds, beautiful. And here's the light again, working the way it was before.
So let's see what happens when you actually close the app, not quitting, just minimize the screen. Let's bring the uh, Godox app uh, in the front here. Wait uh, 10 seconds and see what happens. So I'm gonna be launching the app back here and there it is, let's see if that's connected. Yes, it is. Now let's quit the app, right, completely. Everything out of here, phone, done. Hit the uh, application again and okay so hit the refresh on the bottom i guess connection successful and then let's see what happens there you go the light works i lock it so what else is going on here i think that's pretty much it for the app so boom done so dropped it the firmware this is actually the first time i'm going to be doing this here on the top right you see the three large dots in vertical click on here so I'm going to click here and update. I'm going to speed this up here to save some time. Update complete. Then it says, please restart. I guess I'll turn it off. Turn it back on. I know what you're gonna ask next. Can you actually power this light outdoors? There's no V-mount anywhere to be found here, right? Yes, you can. Here's the actual power cord from the power supply. And this is actually cheaper than a V-mount battery. This is exactly a 300 watt power generator. Since this is a 300 watt light and this is a 300 watt capable generator, same way you won't fill your hard drive to 99.8% because you're asking for trouble, right? So in this particular case, unless you buy a more expensive like 500 watt power generator, and this is by the way, pure sine wave, which means you're not going to damage your devices such as delicate things like iPhone, Blu-ray player, lights like this here, because the square wave, the cheap ones they buy at um, uh, one of those local stores, not to say the names here, start with a W. So that actually is bad for the circuitry here. So when you buy a power supply like this here, make sure it says pure sine wave on the description, which is equivalent to the same purity of an outlet without nothing plugged into it. So we're having a car show in the mall today here, so excuse the noise. So we're gonna occasionally hear these people shouting here. There's a lot of cars inside, inside the mall here, so <laughs> they're actually disassembling everything and getting the cars out of here. So anyway, let's plug this thing in here. All we have to do is to slide this particular model, right? So this has been discontinued, so I will leave similar ones in the description. And then you actually power the lights. Should be somewhere here. There you go, boom. It's powered by this thing here. That's the power supply right there. No cheating. And then you can actually crank this up and you have 300 watts, but don't max it out. I would say probably 75% of the intensity here will be fair with this particular one, but you still have an enormous amount of power outdoors for filming most of the things that, you know, except uh, fighting with the sun. So this is actually a great solution right here. Now it's time to show you guys how easily this thing can handle a softbox this heavy and this is about four feet in diameter. It is quite heavy. And put it in here. I want to do this slow because I don't want to scratch my baby. So there you go. Now you can actually control anywhere you want. So I'm just going to lightly tighten this down. And as you can see, it's not going anywhere. So whatever position that you want. There you go, and there you go, effortlessly. So I'm liking this thing here. Now here's the part that you guys have been waiting for because everybody freaks out about fan noise. I don't like fan noise myself either. So here's the light set to 100%. And the settings on the camera, I have ISO 320, F4, 160th of a second, 30 frames per second frame rate. So right now I have the fan at maximum speed and I am right here and this is what you hear. And there's a lot of heat coming out of this thing here, by the way. Now I'm going to be walking back towards the camera, which is about 12 feet away from that thing. Can you hear anything? I'm going to go back to the light and I'm going to be reducing the fan here by going to the fixture list. So I'm going to be having the menu here so you guys can see what's going on. So 
enable fan mode. So right now, as like I said, I'm on auto. And then I actually have the low speed. So here's what it sounds like. I mean, nobody's gonna be that close with the microphone with the light, but I'm just, you know, showing you. Now I'm gonna be walking away here. I'm right here, right behind the camera. See, my hands is right there. That is not a problem at all. So I'm quite happy with this fan here. And then we have the medium speed and then the high speed. So I'm gonna shut up here. I'm gonna show you guys from here all four settings. Auto, low speed, medium speed, and high speed. And you notice that it did not lose any brightness or any power here by either going to the low speed or high speed. The output is the same. I'm not sure if I like that to crank up the lights to a 100% in a hot environment. Right now the temperature is exactly 72 degrees Fahrenheit right here in this office. And just in case you're shooting something like, I don't know, 100 degrees, 110, just, you know, keep that in mind. Be careful. Like, don't torture the light, right? So. Especially outdoors, you want to be doing a high speed right here, at least. And I would say the temperature here is below 100 degrees Fahrenheit. I can touch this thing here all day. My hands are right here. It's warm. It's not hot. I mean, I don't have the light running for like an hour or anything like that. But, you know, it's been on here for at least 20 minutes before I actually set this whole camera, this whole thing here. So temperature-wise, on a regular temperature indoors, like 72 degrees Fahrenheit, I mean, it's nice. It's good. Okay, cool. So I guess for the interview set, you're going to drop this down all the way to probably 25%. And of course, you have to correct the ISO and your aperture there. But, you know, for a 300-watt light, I don't think you're going to be needing anything above 25% with a soft box, especially if you actually have the light, you know, four, five, six feet away from the subject, that's not a problem. I actually have the light set to the minimum noise in the fan, and this is all you need. So right now I'm gonna be showing you guys the back of the ballast right here. So you adjust your brightness right here, and then you press this button, and then you jump to the color temperature from 2700 all the way to 6500 Kelvin. Then you press this button again, you have your dimming curve, linear, exponential, logarithm, and S-curve. Press it again, goes back to the intensity. Then the menu settings you don't press, you just rotate. So depending on what direction you go, you're gonna be always accessing the effects. It's a little bit weird, so let me uh, rotate counterclockwise, and then you can actually access the same menus by going up. So here's the first page. Second page is this here, the language, reset Bluetooth, address for DMX, fan speed right here, and then you can actually change the values by rotating this knob. Then you go back to the main page and that's it. When you power off the light, you will remember the settings here. Let's say 6200 Kelvin, 8%, power it off. Then power it back up. There you go, it remembers everything. So if you take a break, you don't have to reset everything, especially if this light is placed on a boom or very high, so you don't have to adjust anything here. And under the light, here's your power switch, your DMX jacks, and your power supply right here. Which, of course, you can actually twist and lock. One thing to pay attention here, let's say that you just use this light, you move the light from a location to another here in the studio, for example. Make sure while the light is power on to unplug it from the outlet so you can actually discharge completely the power supply. So when you actually plug this back here, there are no spikes or anything like that. And by the way, you're going to be aligning this line to the top here. Then you screw it in. All right, right now I have the actual setup here. So the light is right there with the GVM large sort box. And this is the setup here. I can't believe how bad an iPhone can actually read artificial light. It's always giving me that yellow nasty color there. So I give up the iPhone business. But anyway, so the camera is here, show you guys what's going on. The light is set to 20%. And ISO 640 to expose the background properly. This is why I'm using ISO 640 right now. 
and the aperture is f4, shutter at 1 16th of a second, and the frame rate is 30. And this is what you get. And very important right now, I'm going to show you guys what's going on here. So each picture profile is going to alter the color temperature that's coming out of the light. So you have the neutral here, monochrome, whatever, right? So the neutral, and I use a Cinetech profile, which provides a higher level of blacks. It throws slightly more magenta on the actual light. So this is an artsy look, and I love this look. And because of that, I'm shooting at 5200 degrees Kelvin, because if I do this here, it's going to look very warm. So 52, I think, is a sweet spot. And I also have the white balance on the camera set to this here. As you can see, the dot is right there, so it's not in the middle, okay? So with that out of the way, let's do some recording here. Now I'm going to be showing you guys what it looks like with this camera set to neutral. So stop the recording real quick here. So I'm going to be adjusting the settings. Go here and I'm going to shoot with the uh, neutral and then when you press info, the settings are as follows. Sharpness all the way down, contrast all the way down, saturation in the middle, color tone in the middle. So you can actually be more green or more magenta. All this stuff you can actually color correct in post. So on my camera, here's what it looks like. As far as the green magenta goes, I can only tell when I'm on my editing suite. So right now what I see on the display of the camera here, it looks pretty nice or satisfactory enough. Now let's test some power here. Right now everything is off, all we see is the background. So the light is at 10 feet away from the model and 1% looks like this here, 10%, 20%, which looks pretty good, and all the way to 100%. And again, ISO 640, 1 60th of a second, aperture F4. So let's lower the ISO all the way down to 100. That's pretty nice, man. Maybe a buck 25. A little bit of a highlights on her face here with the zebra, but I'm going to leave it this way here. So with that light at this particular distance, 10 feet away with the softbox, you're getting these readings here. ISO 125, F4, and 160. Imagine what you can do with F28 or F18. Or you can actually set this up the way it was before, ISO 640. And then you can actually close the aperture all the way down to F9. And then another stop will be around probably F11, ISO 800. So that's a very powerful light. Now, as you can see, I have the reflector on the light right there. And I'm utilizing only 3%. Let me show you guys right there. 4% actually, 4%. And as you can see, the quality of the light that comes out of the reflector is pretty nice. This is actually hard light, and I think it looks pretty decent right there at 4%. Now I'm doing 10% ISO 250 F4. Let's do 20% ISO 100 F4. I'm not going to go anywhere beyond that because... I have a person in front of me here, and I think it is disrespectful to do that, but you get the point. And that's the end of the review. I hope you find the contents helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop them down in the comment section. I respond to everything that I see there, and I absolutely love comments. When I see comments there, it makes me smile. And also, please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. It helps the channel a lot. And I also have affiliate links from Amazon and B&H, so if you buy these slides from my links, it just helps the channel a lot. It does not increase or alter the price. It just tells B&H and Amazon that you guys bought a little something, something from me here, and I would really, really appreciate that. Thank you. So once again, thank you very much for being here, and I'll see you next time.